Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be trying to fix this B unit. Uh, I got this B unit in that lot a few months back, and uh, I tried testing it in my last video, and unfortunately, it didn't seem to work. Uh, the motor revved up fine, but it would not really move, so uh, we're going to try to figure out what's wrong with it and see if we can correct whatever problem it has. I've got a lot of suggestions from you guys that might just do the trick. Anyway, I'll show you guys exactly uh, what's going on with it, just so you know what I'm talking about. So we've got it all set up on the track over here, and one of the first things I'll point out about this uh, locomotive is that even though all the wheels are on the track, if you drag it, it sounds like it's almost derailed. So that's something I noticed in my last video, and I'm still not entirely sure what's going on there. It's quite peculiar. Anyway, if we come over to the controller, and we actually uh, give the unit power, uh, as you can see it fires up, but... motor revs and it, it, it moves but you know not really it, and uh, something definitely does not sound right another thing is if you tilt the model upside down you can kind of hear something loose inside SP Productions theorized that there is a uh, loose drive rod in this thing and that could be possible the wheels are loose in one direction but not the other which is interesting back ones are completely geared so I'm not sure if that's maybe a sign that something's wrong it's certainly not a sign something's good those should be locked in place and there are gears I'm not sure if you guys can tell but when I turn the wheels the other ones turn so maybe the gear worms popped out of place only one way to find out I guess to be honest with you guys I haven't opened up a ton of these super uh, modern Bachman models so, gotta be careful here. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that those screws might be the answer to getting inside this engine. All right, got our little Phillips head there, yeah. And we'll, uh... Just unscrew these. Hopefully this is what is actually holding uh, the locomotive to the shell very well. Couldn't be. Most of the time the shell just pries off, but... Once in a while, they'll do something a little bit unusual like this. But again, only one way to find out. off now so I guess those screws were in fact holding on the shell so I guess wasn't entirely wrong hello just noticed something that should not be bent that way the coupler was also broken on this engine so it's not inconceivable that maybe at some point this locomotive was dropped so that could explain our problems now unfortunately this seems to be actually preventing us from taking this out so I'm going to try to carefully kind of Pry back the plastic here. Uh, we can, whoops, something just fell out. What was that? Uh, that's for one of the windows, I believe. And there we are inside. Huh. There's a speaker right there. Now we need to figure out how to access the worm gear. All right, I've looked the locomotive over a little bit. I think it might be these two screws. This screw, by the way, on top here is bent at sort of a weird angle. Let me show you guys a close-up shot. So right there is the screw on the left side. And if we come over to the right screw, you can see that is bent at a very unusual uh, sort of angle. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. You can see something definitely does not look quite right about that. Also, um, you can see this is the side that happens to have the uh, broken truck so i'm gonna say it was dropped on this side and uh something is wrong inside here i believe to remove this top part you have to remove these screws luckily this screw happens to be easily accessed without removing the board and uh well, we've got that screw out and uh 
truck's certainly loose now. Fortunately, I think I'm going to have to remove this whole upper portion possibly to gain access. I don't know. I think the speaker needs to go. Uh, those screws out. Oop, there's the speaker. It's kind of an odd design. It just pro projects the sound directly out into the truck of the locomotive. Huh. Alright, well that was not exactly what I was expecting. There's all these holes there. Uh, that doesn't show us much. Alright, so I just unscrewed the board uh, right around here and over here. That way I could gain access to this screw which holds on the other truck. And I learned something very unfortunate, which is that if we open this up and we just gently um, kind of pull that out there. This is the truck on the left side, and you can see there's something holding on the worm gear there, right at the end, right over the bearing. Now, if we come over to the right side, and we do the same thing, you can see there is absolutely nothing. So, when this tries to accelerate, it puts pressure on the gear, and then this just winds up sliding right out like that and you lose traction in the motor and then that's why the wheels uh, can turn freely like that. So unfortunately, since we don't have that plastic part, um, I don't think we'll be able to uh, repair this without ordering any parts. Now I've criticized Bachmann's quality in the past, but I have to say their trucks seem to be a common place for problems to occur. This is about the third or fourth time I've seen something like this happen to their trucks and unfortunately I think it's due to a very serious design flaw. It's not under regular use these things break, it's when accidents happen like you accidentally bump the trucks. Now just as comparison, over here I have my old Atherin locomotive. Uh, I got this thing probably about 12 years ago when I was a kid and I've dropped it several times and it's never broken and I think it's due to a very, very different design. Now let me point out something that's similar between these two engines. They both have metal frames. The biggest difference between the Bachmann engine here and the Atherin engine here is how they connect the truck to the frame. The Atherin engine has a little cross piece of metal and right below that there is a bearing. That's where the partially metal truck meets the metal frame. It's a very sturdy design. On the Bachmann engine, there's a plastic piece here which connects the frame. You've got metal connecting to plastic, and there's a big difference. Now, if a major force, like you bumping the truck or dropping it or something like that, comes up in the Bachmann engine, I'm sorry, the Atherin engine, it comes right up here, goes into the frame, and all the stuff up here is protected. In the Bachmann engine, it's all exposed here. So, if you drop this thing, the force comes up through the frame, it gets divided, nothing usually breaks. On the Bachmann engine, the force comes up to this piece of plastic. The plastic's already more brittle than the metal, so it's more likely to break. It has to go higher, so it's less sturdy. And you've also got all these other components here, which are vulnerable to having damage to them. And in this case, what I believe happened is something hit the bottom of this truck, uh, the piece of plastic that went around this bearing uh, was forced up, it cracked, broke, and also the screw bent as it happened. And you can kind of see that's just bent a little bit off to the side there. So unfortunately, it's this design right here which allows these to break a lot easier than other makes. So fortunately, it's made this truck a write-off as it has several others I own. So to be honest with you guys, I'm kind of at a crossroads. I'm not sure what I want to do with this engine. I could try to go out and find replacement parts to fix it, but there's another option which might be a little bit more interesting. Um, I don't really need a B unit for power. I already have two engines which will provide plenty of power, and frankly I don't run very long trains. So we've got a motor in this that's good. We've got a uh, sound value circuit board, which is good. We've got a speaker, all the rest of it. So I'm wondering if we should try to upgrade one of my current locomotives to DCC sound using this kit. Now it needs to be a very particular engine, and uh, obviously it needs to be one that the sounds would be fitting on. But that is an option. 
so uh, I'm not sure what you guys will think of that. Maybe you guys will have a better idea, but that's an option. So either we can try to fix this thing or we can uh, try to just turn this into a dummy engine basically and uh, use the parts for something else. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone.